In this video, I'm going to share with you the science behind how cold showers work. Now, most of us are familiar with a concept called homeostasis, and that concept basically describes the balance between extremes. So your body has a normal ability to balance out its temperature. You can have a fever, or your core temperature can get fairly low, and your body will respond by lowering or increasing that temperature. And somewhere in the middle is where your body, your body chemistry, and your physiology are the most comfortable. Now homeostasis is all about balance, and one of the things that actually balances homeostasis is called hormesis. And that's about letting your body, or creating conditions for your body, to end up going into some extremes. So you go into a high temperature in a sauna, and a cold temperature, say in a cold shower or an ice bath. And those things stress all of the regulating systems that try and hold you in homeostasis, which turns out to be really, really good for you, because your body wants to be able to adapt to extremes as well as just find that happy middle ground. So again, if we imagine that we're in a shower and we turn the water to cold, another thing that happens is that your entire vascular system, all of your blood vessels, basically contract. And they do that to force the blood into the core of your body to keep your core organs warm and also to stop you from radiating heat. So all that blood rushes from your arms and legs into your core. Now if you turn that water tap back up to hot, all your vascular tissue is going to get relaxed again and all that blood is going to come back out into your limbs, your hands and feet, so that your body can actually regulate its inner temperature by releasing heat outwards. So the reason why that's important, and this is a bit of a weird thing to learn about, is your body has about 120,000 kilometers or about 75,000 miles of blood vessels. Now a lot of that's internal to your body, but a lot of it is also in your, obviously in your hands and feet, and your arms and legs, and in your skin. So when you're turning that temperature from hot to cold, hot to cold, what your body has to do is contract and relax, and contract and relax many, many thousands of miles of vascular tissue and capillaries. Now, on the, just a simple level of a muscular exercise, in a way that's kind of like your vascular system doing chin-ups and push-ups, so that that muscle system can get stronger, but there's a lot more going on than just that. When your vascular tissue has to contract and then relax, uh, one of the things that it actually creates is a gas called nitric oxide. Now, nitric oxide has a lot of jobs. It works with your immune system, it works in your brain, and it actually helps your cells mobilize more oxygen uh, and metabolize more oxygen. So on the, every system in your body, your metabolism is more supportive and more activated. Here's a specific example. If you're doing cold showers every day, especially the ones where you go hot, cold, hot, cold, because you're trying to maximize that nitric oxide uh, expression through your system, if that's going on consistently, it actually helps your brain, over time, uh, secrete and regulate a hormone called BDNF, which stands for brain-derived neurotropic factor. Now, neurotropic basically means growing neurons. So, as amazing as that actually sounds, it's true that by doing cold showers, you can actually regulate your brain chemistry, making you a bit smarter, having a bit of a better memory, uh, a more quick way of actually just organizing your thoughts. So that's an important thing because it makes you feel younger. Just imagine, after a few days of doing cold showers every day, your muscular tone in the sense of exercise is getting higher. Your cell's ability to utilize oxygen is raised somewhere between 10 and 25%. And again, cognitively, memory, mood, overall outlook and responsiveness to the world goes up because of that BDNF. So it's hard to shake a stick of cold showers so far because you're already going to be feeling a lot younger and a lot more effective in the world. So what would happen if you took your cold shower, went from hot to cold, and left it for about two to three minutes? Now I don't recommend doing that right away, but if you were to do that, you can imagine all of your blood going into your core, all your vessels contracting. And when that starts to happen, you're gonna actually have a gradually lowering core body temperature. 
now, that's kind of obvious, but what most people aren't aware of is that when your core temperature starts to go down, your body's innate sort of survival metabolism starts to burn off what is called brown fat. Now there's white fat and brown fat and there's a lot of technical things going on in there, but basically brown fat is a way for your body to really rapidly start producing temperature increases on the inside of your body. This is an ancient survival reflex. So it's important to be aware of that your body, like any other system, you know, it gets into habits. If you're always eating, say, donuts, <laughs> your body's habit is to me metabolize all that starch and sugar. If you keep doing the cold showers and you keep using your brown fat stores um, as a way to improve body temperature, you know, in, in a sense of our survival strategy, your body's cellular pathways at burning fat goes up and your body's needs and you could say trust and reliance on something like glucose tends to tip the other way. So that's a kind of a common sense way of understanding, you know, cold and warm. But the most important thing about that is your body becomes more efficient at burning fats. And in modern life, that's actually really important, especially in the middle of your life. So a cold shower, if you're sustaining the cold for two minutes, three minutes or more, is again a way of training your entire physiology to be a better fat burning machine, which isn't just about weight loss. It's actually just about resilient biochemical pathways, or you could say the flow of chi. Another benefit of cold showers has to do with inflammation. Now your immune system produces inflammation in a response to many things. It could be an infection, it could be an immune system disorder, say like arthritis, and even just in the normal process of exercise and tissue repair, inflammation is important and it regulates a lot of those processes. But most people nowadays, especially if you have any chronic health problems, have a systemic upregulation to the inflammatory part of your immune system. It's like a low-grade allergy that's going on most of the time. And if it gets really complicated or really aggressive, it can actually give people what is called autoimmunity, where your immune system is starting to attack your own tissues. So regulating inflammation can be essential. The mechanisms are a bit complicated, but Cold showers are also known to reduce the inflammatory cascades in the body. On a similar level, and this is a little bit tricky, your body can actually reduce its stress physiology and you could say the memory of distress through a mechanism called catecholamine dispersal. So if you're a person who has a lot of tension and you walk around holding all your tension, you could say in your upper shoulders, uh, maybe in your muscles around your stomach, your diaphragm, uh, maybe it's around your low back, it really depends on where each of us holds our stress. And when you're holding that much tension in a certain muscle, your body actually pre-positions what are called catecholamines, or the kind of adrenaline or noradrenaline that has that two second fight or flight really fast reaction. So again, if you're walking around and you're used to holding a certain amount of tension in your shoulders, your body innately holds those stress hormones called catecholamines in your shoulders. When your body goes into a cold shower, you go from comfortable to cold, your body has to mobilize all those catecholamines, those rapid acting stress hormones, to basically help your muscles all over your body respond to that change in temperature. So instead of holding all your stress hormones and all your stress muscles, your body has to disperse those stress hormones into all of your muscles just in case you started to shake or, or uh, tremble, uh, which is a normal response to being really cold. So that's a pretty cool thing to know, especially if you're a person who has the habit of holding a lot of tension in your muscles. That's one of my favorites because one of my focuses as a clinician is on helping people reduce the embodiment of stress. The last one I'll bring up has to do with fertility. And this is true for both men and women. When you're doing this process of going from hot to cold, hot to cold, your nitric oxide levels are going up, your vascular tissue and your capillaries are working really hard to either squeeze the blood back into your uh, internal organs or release the blood from your organs back out into your limbs. That has a really unique impact on uh, women's fertility because of the increased circulation and clearance around the uterus. And it also helps men with respect to erectile dysfunction. Now this is one of those fun things we say in medicine that you can't have ED without ED. 
And what that really means is you can't have an erectile dysfunction with a person unless they already have what's called endothelial dysfunction. So endothelial, uh, the endothelium is actually the inner lining of your entire vascular system, which again is 100,000 plus kilometers. When you're exciting that through hot and cold, not only is the nitric oxide levels going up, but the actual uh, capillary beds themselves and the hormones that regulate the contraction and expansion of, of those vascular tissues also goes up and, begets, and becomes more resilient in a way. So with respect to female reproductive health and male reproductive health, cold showers are a win once again. So for our first week, as you're hopefully already doing, the focus is on primarily going from hot to cold and cold to hot about every 15 seconds after you've had your regular shower. So when I'm engaged in this practice, I usually get in my shower, wash my hair, do my things, shave, and then I start going 15 on, 15 off with the cold water. So I hope you're already invested in that part of the practice, and if not, give it a try. And uh, you'll notice that uh, after four days, because it takes about four days for all of these things to catch up to you, you're going to start noticing a lot more. So I hope this video has given you a bit of insight on how cold showers work, and uh, that inspires you to give it a try. And hormesis is a great teacher, so if you're feeling timid, notice that the opposite of timid is to really go and face some of the extremes just to find out. And you're not going to end up getting hurt at all. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.